You understand in osteopathy, we don't have too many protocol. We treat what we find, but just to help you with brain one, we have those different phases, right? Those phases are the steps of the class and they're also the steps in the treatment. Phase zero, you treat whatever you consider the dominant is. So whatever you feel, start with, you start with phase zero. When it's time to do phase one, we do what the old osteopath called down-regulating the sympathetics, right? So you're gonna look for those area or autonomic, of autonomic nervous system dysregulation. If you don't pay attention to them, if you don't reveal them, if you don't assess them, you are going to have some very sensitive patients after acute trauma, car accident, that are going to get worse after your treatment, not better, because every information you give them, they have, um, they're gonna respond as an hyper, as, as they're gonna consider it as a trauma, because you have to downregulate those response. So you look for those response on your way to touch the cranium, the neck, you feel that you have those reactions with that can be in hyper regulation, hyper sympathetic arousal or hypo. So we talked about that yesterday, how to do that. And you release those, those areas. Then you can touch the skin, the cranium, the bones, the brain without any uh, uh, big response, autonomic nervous system response out of the control of the person, right? Then it's time to look in our protocol for phase one for white matter, gray matter, right? And specifically, we start with the nuclei, the subcortical structures, and you have different options now how to start. So you have many nuclei that you learned and white matter. So which one to start with? We could do different things. You can go with the ventricular system and look what's... Uh, hindering the flow, the fluid, what creating turbulence, what creating any co external compression to the ventricular system, but you are not going to assess all the nuclei this way. If a nuclei is too far from the ventricular system, like the claustrum, the insula, the cortex, you may not feel it compressing the ventricle. It has to be um, only the periventricular structure that you can assess this way. But to start, you know, feel what disturbs the ventricle. What else you can do? You can do <clears throat> the oldest osteopathic technique is to feel um, w when you re are inside the brain, the uh, lesion is going to pull you. So you're going to follow the pull, the ease, and see why it pulls you inside the brain. You can um, work with, um, in level two, you're going to learn four or five different techniques like this. You can, if you learn thermodiagnostic, you can apply thermodiagnostic, but you have to recalibrate your hands. You have much thinner mm, thermal field in the brain than in the rest of the body. So a big field in the body, you're gonna have the equivalent of it, one tenth of the heat in the brain. You have to recalibrate a little bit when you come at the level of the brain. You can work with the lymphatics, maybe you need to know this technique, you can work with uh, the cranial fluid stops, you can work with any technique you want, right? And <clears throat> when you are done with the releasing a certain number of nuclei, knowing that important nuclei that often come up with the brain are um, structures that are often primary for the nuclei and the brain structure are brainstem, cerebellum, very important. Um, then we have hippocampus, amygdala, and head of the codet, all those are com comments, but everything is possible. When you're done with that, we're going to enter into <coughs> phase three, which is to really replace the brain within the cranium. We're going to do brain and spinal cord mobility. We're going to start with the motilities. We learn a few motilities in this class. We're going to start with motility just to be able to go into mobility and replace the brain that has been, you know, maybe after a hit or a trauma, the brain, um, you have an inflammation of the meninges, maybe you have scar tissue after a few years, few months, 
and the brain is going to slowly be pulled on one side and the other side. The brain is never exactly in the center of the cranium, which means that if the brain is rotated like this toward the left, you have a stretch of those cranial nerve uh, and the tissue. You have this brain here with less oxygen, maybe against the skull, with uh, uh, you know the standard um, uh, relaxed cranial nerve and, and fascia. You're gonna have to replace this, and everything gonna follow in the body. Remember the spinal cord, the spinal nerve, all the way to the fascia. Everything gonna realign when the brain is going to realign. So that's the last phase, and there is a certain hierarchy. If you try to replace the brain and you feel a big resistance, you probably forget to do the nuclei or another structure. And if your nuclei also resist and you don't understand why it's hard to feel them, to release them, you forget to take care of the autonomic nervous system dysregulation. <coughs> you have to look for those uh, uh, dysfunction first. Right, so you have those phase. It's good to start with that. Sometimes people do something else and the pro uh, respond to something else in this protocol, but it's something good to start with for one.